G'day guys, this is uh, my FX61 on an auto launch here. Uh, we're running iNav 7.1 and it's running the first for the first time with its uh, Walk Snail Avatar HD Pro camera and VTX. So far I'm fairly impressed with, with the package. My biggest disappointment so far, which I've already got in my ZO HD Drift, is uh, that's running the 1S light camera. Um, range is a little bit of, a, of an issue I've found with this, so my plan is with this one today to try and test the range on this one as well, and just see what we get out of the stock setup. Got a slight breeze coming from, from away, away from us into the mountain. I expect that to pick up a little bit during the flight, which could make it a bit, bit interesting for landing, but we'll see. So this plane's running the Speedy BF405 wing flight controller. It's been in the in the plane now for some time. It's been very good. I've enjoyed it. I would buy it again. Um, and the uh, drift has the the wing mini in it, which also has been quite good too. So currently we're on our way out. We'll see what sort of range we can get here at half a kilometre. Our signal strength of only two. So we've already dropped half of it. The bite rate down to uh, well, it's a 21 at the moment. We've bumped back up to signal strength of three. Floating between signal two and three with a bite rate of around 11 megabytes per second. My drift couldn't reach that road. So we've just got over the one kilometre range, uh, signal strength down to one, so it looks like it's very similar, 1.3 kilometres almost, that's at 1.3, so we've still got a signal strength of one, bite rate of six, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to do out of that, I don't want to cross the road there. Uh, signal strength back up to two at 1.4 kilometres. I know I can upgrade the I can upgrade the aerials and I plan to do that on the headset. But uh, I was uh, hoping for a, a quite a bit more range than that. I've also unlocked the the eight channels and higher power outputs um, as described in the Cadex website. So we are running 1200 milliwatt transmit power at the moment. That's what I've got it set to, and it's working all eight channels. We'll try over this side and just see if it's any different. Signal strength of three at a kilometer away, floating between signal two and three, 1.1 kilometers. I could say it's probably a little bit better than the 1S light system that's in the drift as it was barely getting this far. So we're still at signal two with 1.3 kilometers. Signal stre strength of one and 10 megabytes per second at one and a half kilometers distance. Signal two at one and a half. So it, 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 the factors in there, signal strength at two at 1.6 kilometers and don't want to push it too much further. We're out to 1.7, so I guess it's okay. This has proven to be a little bit better than the 1S light system in the drift. So we're at 1.7 kilometers there and it was flashing back up with a signal strength of two. So the pro kit that I've got is the one with the single aerial. I didn't get the dual air antenna um, set up. It wasn't in stock at the time, so I, I ended up getting this one here, the Walksnell Avatar HD kit version 2 with 32 gigabyte storage with Gyra Flow. I'm not sure whether, maybe the dual antenna has a bit more range than this one, but either way they still claim that this should do up to four kilometers um, on this setup. Personally, I'm a little bit disappointed with the range. So let me know what you think, guys. Uh, is this good or not? Obviously, line of sight's key.
And I am going from my 1.3 video transmission down up uh, to the HD. It's hard to sort of <clears throat> go back to analog after you started flying with this, but it's, I like to have that, I like to have that uh, freedom of having excellent video transmission regardless of whether I'm using it. I don't want a failure at only one and a half kilometers away. So down to a signal strength of one at the moment, but that's because I've gone behind myself. Lost a bit of line of sight there. It's the only problem with the 5.8 gigahertz system. Its penetration is not real great compared to the 1.3. So you need to be need to keep that line of sight. So if any, anyone out there watching this is using the same setup. Uh, and uh, you've got any tips for me on longer range or better antennas I've got a couple in mind they're the true RC um, brand haven't decided which one yet but if anyone's getting some great long range distance solid distance with decent antennas can you let me know and I'll um, keep that in mind I might even look at getting a set So head back out again, we're approaching uh, the 900 metre mark again here at a bit lower range. Signals floating between 2 and 3. Buy rates at 22. What I do like with this setup is it does warn you around the edges of the screen starts flashing red when you're getting low and signals becoming poor. I think that's a great idea. I'd like to also know what other people have been getting in the way of bite rate with this uh, stock setup. He will probably lose a bit of signal again as we go over this hill. Still at signal strength of 3, 20, oh, that didn't lose anything there, mustn't have lost line of sight. but. Still love the FX61 though, it's a great plane I think. it's. Had it for years. It's gone through a few changes. Uh, I can't, I can't sort of bin it, to be honest, and and build something with its electronics. I, I just like the way it flies. It's, it's never really failed me. It's, it's a little bit hungry, I guess, on the amperage at 10, 10 to a flow between 10 and 11 amps. But it's running a pretty heavy battery, a 10,000 milliamp battery. It can get up to a, close to an hour on, on flight time. I have had that before. So we're just over the kilometre mark there again. Signal strengths at 2. By rates at 11. Guess as a field flyer, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's giving you plenty of room to fly and you don't really need to upgrade the antennas really, I guess, if this is all you want to do. I just like to have solid, solid range, that's all. I would like to upgrade them just for that reason. It's very hard to fly long range anyway now, but I guess keeping within the laws, the setup is fine.
Now, the Goggle X has been a good goggle for me. I've had no issues. People have complained about it due to certain issues of the heat sink, I guess, but I've upgraded my heat sink. I've got the free heat sink. Um, I've upgraded the, uh, the, the padding around your face. I've got a thicker padding on there, which blocks out nearly all the light that was leaking in, but the stock padding was still comfortable on my face. Here we go out 1200 meters now, a signal strength of two, getting out to 1.3 kilometers, dropping down signal one, signal two. So it's similar to the One S. I think it's a little bit better than the One S light in the drift. Because we're solid at signal two there, bite rate of 11, 1.3 kilometers. I'm only at 90 meters in height. And I think as we go further around there, if we had kept going, we would have lost signal because it, at the corner of the mountains blocking my line of sight. I don't know guys, is that, how do you rate the, the, the range on the stock setup of this? I'd like to know people's thoughts and what other people are doing to better the range. It would be uh, worthy of me to sort of I'd like, I'd like to upgrade this. As we float back over the sugarcane fields, not a place you want to want your plane to come down. But all in all, I think the Avatar system's good. The Goggle X has been good. Do the minor upgrades. I'll upgrade the antennas. had no issues with fogging or heat it's all quite good and also both the 1s light in the drift and this HD Pro kit that I've got in the FX 61 here seem pretty good nice picture beautiful OSD display Yeah, got nothing to complain about really with it other than the price but yeah anyway that DJI is just up there too anyway so price is price for HD it's expensive to get into it you just got to accept that I guess not that analogs are much cheaper anyway I think analogs you know you're gonna be spending nearly the same amount on an analog system So that'll be about it. I think 1.5, I think we got out to, was it? Or 1.7 kilometers um, in max distance on the VTX, on the Goggle X. Stock antennas running the HD Pro setup in the plane. Not bad, better than the 1S, but yeah, still not great. So we'll come back around now, we'll, we'll, we'll get ready for our landing. Now the wind's kind of got up a little bit, it's blowing from about those mountains over there back into me, so I've got kind of like a semi-tail crosswind here, which can be a little bit tricky. I've noticed it on both my planes running this now, I think the OSD can't be totally in sync with the video that's all I can put it because I don't think the uh, the horizon is that far out as I nav did a lot to come to fix that or to better it anyway uh, but if you're looking at it at times in this video it's a long way out I think it's um, more more due to the fact that maybe the OSD isn't quite in sync at the moment with the video and that's something I can't really adjust too much with the program I've got to overlay the OSD. It looks like it's a few seconds out, which is why it's showing horizon drift. So 
So we'll do another loop and then we'll bring it in for a landing. Just trying to get a feel for the wind here. It's certainly feeling semi crosswind here. Slowing it down could be another problem too. The grass is quite long so it's not a real big issue if you have to ditch it it's not going to damage the plane too much anyway. Alright coming in for a landing. We got the tailwind here. And not too bad, grass has caught it. So there's the stats for the flight, if anyone wants to have a good look at that, just pause the video. Anyway guys, that's my little test with the walk snail unit, HD unit, uh, with a bit of range on the stock setup. Let me know what you think in the comments and um, give us some tips on improving the longer range, that would be handy. Stay safe, keep flying guys, and bye for now.